Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat, although it's kind of pretty rich the last few days. Um, before I jump into introducing myself, let me just tell you the title this week or to this episode. Today is number 481 in an ongoing series of talks, which I'll explain in a moment. The topic today is the diminishment of women, which is the price of the diminishment of women, I think I said. I think I said the price. And Me Too is just the beginning. That's a scary title, and I'm going to explain what I mean, hopefully, because I have no idea what it's going to be like, but I'll jump into that in a moment. But before I do, let me choose myself and the formal introduction of why I do these talks. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance and creating balance in life, love, and business. And every day I do these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And as I said, this is episode 481, so there's a lot have gone before this. And basically, this is sort of a part three. As I started a couple of days ago with some rant-level responses to what's been happening, and I wanted to speak to this one um, because I want to include a lot of stuff in the topic, and I want to give more of a general umbrella about the price we're paying for diminishing women and how Me Too is just the beginning. So um, let's explore, shall we? <laughs> um, this has been driving me for a while as in this concept, discussion, conversation and frustration on my part being a straight white male seeing how women are being diminished depleted demeaned and suppressed Sorry, I'm just sitting with that for a moment going, that is really the core of it and a lot of it for me, is this, there's a sense of frustration. I know there's some, some of my own history in here about how I've felt suppressed in my own upbringing, bullying, stuff like that, but there's more to it than that for me. But I want to speak more to the topic at hand first. I'm not doing any self-disclosure unless it shows up. Um, but what I'm aware of also seeing, seeing some topics of late. I did talk about this a few days ago. Hi, Jade. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Having seen some broadcasts of, sorry, some posts of late, I mentioned earlier about the whole um, uprising commentary about a lot of, so many women I know as friends, clients, and people I know as powerful leaders expressing their Me Too um, experiences. But I want to speak to a different part of it now because there's a realization, in fact, I was just happened to be watching a preview for a movie called The Chalice by a friend of mine, Kaya Alexander, who um, I'll link in the comments or I'll mention in the comments because it was just hitting on something that I'm very, very aware of myself, is the exclusion and the suppression of women in history. So not just the Me Too conversation that's happening now, at least for the last five years, but how women have been repressed, suppressed, ex externalized, exiled, removed from any level of authority in history. Even though so many things women have done that have made the society what it is. I feel like there's a paradigm shift coming, a big one, which frankly I'm applauding and welcoming in, which is the feminine leadership that we've been, that I personally, maybe not everybody, but I personally have been in great humility toward and worshiping of for several years now and have a, a, a deep, um, I won't say yearning so much as an appreciation of it showing up because we need it more than ever. And I'll get into that in a moment, hopefully, too, because there's a lot wrong with what's going on. There's also a lot right that can happen. And I believe the right path is with feminine leadership. Um, I mentioned yesterday in the broadcast um, talking about, I should, yeah, just the day before, it was yesterday, because I was talking about um, what a friend of mine shared on a, a conference call on, on Sunday about how the difference between the masculine and feminine energy runs, which basically is that the masculine energy is more pointed, as in it's uh, penetrating, it's impacting, it's, it's directional. Scratch that. Directional is also both, but I'm using a different terminology here. But definitely that penetrating, pushing and invasion energy is the masculine, which is the way the culture of this planet has been running for many, many years. For the feminine, the feminine is more rounded, which is inclusive, inviting, and um, collaborative. And those two differences, those two energetic differences, is what are showing us where we've been and where we need to go. The culture we've been in for the last at least 2,000 years, if not longer, because of course, more than 2,000 years ago, we don't have really good accurate history to go by. We've had a um, 
patriarchal puritanical focus on the western world particularly and a suppression of the feminine that's been the way it is in fact in the bible yes i'm going to go in the bible i'm going to go there yes i'm going to go there and i'm a nice jewish boy from england talking about the bible so get over it um <laughs> but in the bible there is a large section of the bible that's missing from the Dead Sea scrolls which empowered the feminine goddess it's called they're called the gnostic scrolls in case you want to look them up g-n-o-s-t-i-c which is funnily enough slightly shorter than agnostic so agnostic gnostic are the same th uh, are related and the gnostic scrolls are expressing the feminine in the sense of the goddess energy which is somehow missing from the king james bible i wonder why so it's not a recent thing that women have been suppressed or excluded or um, diminished. Our culture has been proactively putting men first, women second. That's the way it's been. Now, there's a difference between, I'm gonna be careful I say this, because it could be dangerous. <laughs> I wanna say another, let me, let me try and get on another angle, because I'm realize I could go down a very dangerous path if I go down that way, for myself at least. So let me just quickly get back on track where I started with the Bible. Um, there's so much about the Bible that's wrong anyway, and I won't get into that, but I'll tell you now, the Bible is one very good fiction. Um, and people are going to go, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's like, if you read the Bible literally, you're in trouble. If you read it allegorically, you're in better luck. But also large chunks of the Bible are missing. There's also the, um, um, the, the, the section of the Bible that actually Judah wrote is missing as well because Judah was a villain so you don't want to have him write it in the Bible because you want to make sure he's a real villain well it may not be so much so the Bible itself the King James Version especially is an incomplete book and it excludes certain things so we've had a religion Christian faith Catholic faith based on the Bible that was very much about putting women second because it, the Bible told them to you know Eve was part of was Adam's rib wasn't Adam's equal so from the very beginning in the beginning the bible has portrayed women as second class because the people who wrote the bible guess what were men the people who wrote the bible had an intention to make sure the message they put out there would govern the way society was run you yeah, know i'm working very thin i see with some people um but i'm not scared of that <laughs> to to quote one of my teachers um being a very spiritually based person Religion is for those people who are afraid of hell. Spirituality is for people who've been there. I've been there. So I'm not afraid of saying this out loud. I'm not gonna get struck down by lightning or burn up in the fires of hell because one, because in the Jewish faith, <laughs> in the Jewish faith there isn't a hell. So, and in the spiritual teachings, hell is what we do. Thank you, Lisa, Lisa I appreciate that. Um, preach. Yeah, I'm, I'm not as intention as preaching this one, but it's what I was just talking about. It's what came through. Um, but. Being a spiritual person, I've come to see a much greater picture and come from a Jewish faith that may give me a springboard because the Jewish faith is different from the, from the Catholic and Christian faith, duh, um, because Jesus wasn't our savior. You know, we had a different one. Um, and I don't think he was really a savior anyway. Elijah, that's another story. And I'm not gonna get into the whole Jewish teachings because that's not my skill set. Even though I did go through a bar mitzvah, I kind of quit at that point. So I don't have a lot of teaching on that point. But I want to say this, I'm getting off track here. For thousands of years, this planet has been run by men and who made sure that in all the documentation, yes, the Bible, history books and other things, they would put women second. I think we're getting to the point where that's gonna change. I'm hoping, praying, intending that we get to the point where that's gonna change. Because the reality is that we have had an imbalance in culture for so long that women have finally, and I'm saying, and I wanna say it in a careful way, but the Me Too movement is the beginning of something because the Me Too movement is not it. The Me Too movement is starting to wake up the world to women and to some men who've been through this, but to women who have been hurt, abused, raped, sexualized by men. But that's not the end result. The end result is gonna be when we move beyond that because I was, again, talking about, sorry, I was watching my friend's um, movie preview for a movie called The Chalice, again, Kaya Alexander, you can find her on Facebook. Um, I just happened to catch it, on, catch it scrolling through and I was like, this is powerful because it speaks to this point is that what really has to happen is women, I don't say need to be, but the feminine, put it this way, the feminine energetic, the feminine polarity, the feminine majesty has been off the side of the field for too long. The world as we're moving forward into, the world that I believe we're heading towards requires for the saving of the planet because we're going to destroy it otherwise, 
the inclusion of the feminine with the masculine. Now, yes, that's also beyond the, tra the gender specifics because there are men who are feminine, women who are masculine, and we carry both inside. So let me just speak to the, uh, the archetype or the energetic of masculine and feminine because we all have it. But it's more about the fact that so many men have been so wedged up against the wall of trying to be masculine, they've suppressed, repressed, ignored their feminine heart. Yes, we have feminine hearts too. And what I've been aware of, and this is, this is why no drives me, um, I'll get to that in a second. What I'm aware of is the fact that the energetic that's needed more and more is the feminine energy, which is one that has forgiveness, compassion, collaboration, cooperation, intuition, insight, all well, these different gifts that the feminine brings that men have when they wake up to it. It's like when, you, when men have a gut feeling or a hunch, that's intuition, but they're not willing to call it that because that's a feminine skill. But the same thing. So realizing more and more that we as men have a role to play in this, not just to be the masculine counterpart alone, but to embrace and embody our own feminine energy because we carry it too. And you ladies have also been taught over the last 60, 70 years at least to compete like men in the business world. So you've actually lost hold of your feminine for a lot of the time because you've been trained by the culture to battle with the men in the corporate world. So there's two energetics of macho, toxic masculinity basically, trying to succeed in the business world. And the business world is reaching a critical um, tipping point. And I believe what's gonna save the culture save business, save the political arena, save the planet, is the feminine energetic. Now, in the talk yesterday, and there was some interesting after, um, uh, in the replay comments, and you know who you are, um, that, that talked to a lot about how women have been educated in an er erroneous way. Because again, the teaching of the planet is the masculine mindset, so women aren't gonna be taught their power by men, of course not, that wouldn't be fair. They wouldn't be supporting the men, of course not. It's the same thing about, you know, you don't want to make people healthy. You want to keep them sick so you make money because if they're healthy, you don't get paid. That's why our health system screwed up, by the way. That's, not, anyway, that's a whole other rant, <laughs> not for this topic, but I did go there. But what I'm very aware of, though, is that we have, a lot of us men, have been afraid of our feminine energy as well. And that's the people I want to bring back in. Okay, so this is going back several years ago, actually. I've, I've, had, I've done some pretty interesting journeys on my spiritual path. I've had some readings done and some, some um, hypnotherapy and other things too. So yes, I'm a bit weird that way maybe. For some of you, that might be nothing. You might go, oh yeah, that's easy. But in one of the past life regression experiences type things, I transcended that mindset and experienced a visual experience internally. I didn't see it out there, but internally I saw visually my feminine and masculine polarities. And I was stunned, to be honest, in a very good way, to see the different energetics. For me, what I've discovered about my feminine energy is that she's way more powerful than my masculine this is what this was the clue i got way before i got the realization of it because i was a slow learner um but i really had the wake up call in 2007 when i started doing this work more fully but i had a glimpse about five years before that when i had this understanding of just how powerful my feminine was and i denied her energetic inside of me because i wanted to be manly i wanted to be masculine and my my macho and it was a macho energy at the time it was like a caveman very brute force very lowbrow <laughs> and I wasn't comfortable with that so I was stuck in the middle of these two this quandary so what I realized afterwards with the work I've done since is that the elevated masculine I know is part of who I am and the work I do is the ones in reverence to that feminine energy and that's where we need to go I feel more and more for us men is holding a reverent space for women in their feminine now I gotta be careful and qualifying this because a lot of you ladies out there have forgotten your own fe forgotten your own feminine power too and by so, so doing, you've become less effective, less enjoyable. Sorry, I had to say it that way. And also, you've either, either been battling with men and acting like men, which you're losing out on how to be in a really powerful relationship. That's whole, again, another topic I've talked about many times. But also, you've forgotten your way into your power and your leadership. If you choose to move into a reactionary energy, the yes, the bitchy energy, and the limited energy because you're not knowing about what's going on really, then you become reactionary to what's happening in the world. Now, the Me Too movement is part of that in terms of needed to have that reaction to what happened so many years ago for so many people. At the same time, you can't live there because nothing happens if you stay in the pain until you heal those traumas. And yes, justice, um, penance may be required for those who, who did those actions. But if you stay in the pain, nothing happens. They may, get, they may get incarcerated, may get imprisoned, may get 
may pay a penance, but you unfortunately don't get healed because you're stuck in the pain. So the Me Too movement is a stepping stone. The Me Too movement is a beginning of the journey that we have yet to go through. And I talked about Me Too a couple of days ago, and this has been a very rich exploration. Of, just to so you clear, I'm not coming from a script. This is exploration for me. So you're watching me like pull things apart. So your comments are welcome. And certainly afterwards, when I sign off, you can look. You can definitely get comments there again. But for me personally, what I'm realizing more and more is the call from this place inside is the feminine leadership that is both ours as men who own our feminine as well as our mas as masculine. And for you ladies who also claim own your feminine and your masculine and GQ, both, we all do. There's a call to bring that feminine energy up and out into the world in a way that's going to help us heal, transform and grow to the side that we've yet to become. The true calling of our planet, the true calling of our world requires both to work or we're going to kill it. That simple. So this planet has, according to the climate scientists, reached an, is reaching or has reached or is very close to or has exceeded, gone past, the next real point where we're going to destroy the planet. Well, the thing is we won't destroy the planet. We'll destroy ourselves. The planet will get over us. It's done it before it do it again. So our opportunity is to change that course. Now, environmentally speaking, that's a whole other go. <coughs> Excuse me. Environmentally speaking, that's a whole other conversation. I don't have the context for or the wisdom for to give you here. You can do your own, own research. But at least in our collaboration, societal understandings, communications, laws, agreements, leadership, the feminine energy is needed. And how that's going to play out, I have some ideas. I'm open to discussions. I don't have the answers. <laughs> As I said, this is the beginning. McCall, oh, you're, McCall, you're in the conversation. Of course you are. True, the wisdom of duality, two energies that keep each other balanced. I don't want to keep... I, 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 so my, my trigger is the word keep because I don't want to feel like they're contained. So I would say yes to that and I'd say two energies that balance each other. Maybe not even say keep each other balanced, but two energies that do balance each other because that's the thing. If we're both expressing naturally fully, it is an equal balance and it's easily it's an easier dance. That word keep buggers me, so that's just me. So, you know, your phrasing is fine. I just have my own perspective on it. But yes, it is that. And it's that oneness that comes from the duality. It's the oneness of having unity between the masculine and feminine that comes together in harmony, in collaboration, in balance, and then can create the change. And that's where I think we're going. At least that's my delusional vision of the world. <laughs> that's where I feel we need to go. So this is a short... Um, nudge in that direction to speak about this more again this is partly inspired by the video I saw just earlier which is the trailer for my friend's movie um, that looks really on point about this and so I'll put the link to that video in the in the comments too so you can watch it for yourself um, I think that's it that's it for now again as I said this is this is the third video in a row of an exploration I'm unpacking and like unpacking a suitcase of new things coming out for me about this paradigm of Me Too of women about how things have not worked and how they can work. So this is just a meandering path for me because I'm not on a mission. I'm, the mission isn't there clearly for me yet. It's coming. So these talks are here for that. So um, I thank you for being with me as always. I thank you for being watching as well. I do invite your comments afterwards if you're watching in the replay. And I do thank you for your participation, even if it's challenging because it's not always the answers. So I do say um, thank you, as always, for being with me on these talks, because they're an exploration of my own. I do invite you to add your comments below. If you have any questions and thoughts and you want to reach out to me to talk about it, you can reach out to me over social media, um, for those of you who know how to find me. This, by the way, is on Facebook Live, and it will go onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine, and also go under my eventually on my podcast on iTunes, which is Messages from the Masculine as well. You can subscribe to those channels. You can also download as needed. And uh, if any questions, reach out. I'm, I'm open to discussion. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time, Facebook Live. I'll see you here. Take care. Bye.